One of the things we're going to address fairly frequently here at One Body are some misconceptions about God that have found their way into American culture. Now, these errors come from many different places. Be that ignorance, you know how sometimes people just make up answers to their questions when they don't have them. They can come from Hollywood, you know, the story one good cop can fight the devil himself and win. Misconceptions can come from, say, the Bugs Bunny cartoons, which showed us that heaven means floating around on a cloud playing a harp all day. See, not true. They can come from lots of different places. Well, today, I want to deal with a prevalent misconception that comes from bad or false deductions. This means these come from incorrect or negative conclusions that people have made from positive information. What do I mean? Here's an example. Let's say you have a friend named Mike, and Mike likes pizza. He likes it so much that he learned how to make it from scratch. Well, Mike also likes Megan. Well, you knew there was going to be a girl in the story somewhere. So Mike has been planning to ask Megan out. She's the one. Okay, well, here's an example of a false deduction. One example would be for Mike to see Megan eating a pizza at Pizza Hut and therefore conclude that she's not interested in tasting his pizza because she likes Pizza Hut. Do you see where I'm going with this? Mike is seeing something true, but making a wrong assumption and he very well may never approach Megan because of it. The words of this book have been the most controversial and influential objects in history. Most of us have some perspective on it, good or bad. We know that the Bible supposedly tells us the best way to live. We want to win interpret it with a little sense. That's really not new information. It gives lots of advice on how to behave, what to do and what not to do. Okay? But I have to say that I come across a lot of people who have a misconception of why it says that. I know that when, when I was small, I had this image of my, in my head of God sitting up somewhere on a great mystical judge's bench. And whenever I sinned or disobeyed my parents or made a mistake, the God was angry with me. He had his great golden ledger and was quite frustrated as he made a record of all my misdeeds. But why did I think that? What made me think that God was angry with me? That he was personally offended when I stole that toy from the dime store? How did that come? How did I come to that conclusion? Was it something my parents said? Was it something I heard in church or saw in a movie? Could it have been something I inferred through someone trying to use some Bible verse to warn me away from danger? 2 Corinthians 3 6 says, He made us able to be servants of a new agreement from himself to his people. It is not an agreement of written laws, but it is of the Spirit. The written law brings death, but the Spirit gives life. See, I've heard quite a few theories over the years on what this means, but I will tell you what it means here at One Body. There is truth in this book about God's love for us, His plan for us. There's truth about ways that we can make our lives better. How to have occupational success, great relationships, and a truly fulfilling life. That is the actual spirit of this book. But it's possible to take small pieces of it and deduce things that are not in line with the spirit of the book. False misconceptions. <clears throat> Many years before that little boy who was snatching toys came to understand that the parts of this book that God actually spoke were said to help us. He didn't and doesn't want me to steal because he knew that the store owners would want to see me prosecuted. I could go to jail or a juvie at the time. That's not a better life for me. <clears throat> or worse, they could call my mother who would have killed me. That's no life for me. Not better. See, I can choose to touch an electrified fence. God hopes that I don't choose that. Just the same way a parent doesn't want their child to hurt themselves. But it's not because it disturbs him on some galactic spiritual level. God tells us not to commit adultery because if I sleep with my neighbor's wife, then my neighbor might shoot me. My own wife might cut me open with her daddy's straight razor. See, that's not a better life. That's not a better life. The commandments or suggestions God gives us are for us, not him. Now, he cares about each of us, so he doesn't want us hurting each other. But the do's and don'ts, at least the ones that he actually gave, are for us. God loves us. But actually, those do's and don'ts are not the misconception I really wanted to talk about. See, we live in a pretty messed up world. 
a lot of things have happened since the good old Garden of Eden or Mount Sinai and everybody's not necessarily starting from the same place. And those looking to interpret life by the letter do not always remember to explain that God sees where we are. He sees what has happened and what's happening. And the fact that many of our lives look somewhat twisted does not dissuade him from loving us or wanting to help. The scripture says, Come unto me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden or burdened down, and I will give you rest. What about those of us who weren't born to loving parents who regularly gave them food to eat? What if you're born to a poor or starving family? What if you don't have anyone taking care of you? Or if the person who's supposed to be feeding you is a mean drunk who's quick to hit you if you ask for anything? Is God mad at you if you steal some food? Does he expect you to starve to fulfill some ethereal mystical sense of right and wrong? The misconception I want to come against today is that God doesn't care about your situation. That he counts what you do against you but doesn't look at your surroundings or the contributing factors to your decisions. God does see when you live under injustice. He sees when you're desperate. He sees when you're trying to do something good and it just doesn't work out. See, God understands. Now, I'm not saying he agrees with every decision, but he understands. I'm not saying there won't be any consequences to bad decisions. If you try to rob that bank, you may go to jail or get shot. Rock and roll. You choose to sleep with that great dancer in the club who keeps scratching themselves and you may catch something you don't want. But it won't be because God is mad at you. He actually understands if you really just couldn't stand to let your kid's birthday pass without having a gift to give them. He understands if you were feeling bad about yourself and just wanted to feel better. More than anyone else you will ever meet, he understands. But let's look at something even more common, okay? Most of the people watching this weren't born in a trash heap in Bangladesh and their children aren't uh, one meal away from starvation. So let's not focus on the it's not my fault or couldn't be helped category. What about those of us who just made mistakes or made choices that don't agree with the do's and don'ts list? Is God mad? Is he only interested in us or in helping us or having a relationship with us after we fix ourselves? I say no. The God I've come to know over the last 30 years is not focused so much or overly concerned about our bad choices. Don't get me wrong. He doesn't want us to get arrested or stabbed. He doesn't want us to catch diseases that would make it far harder for us to have the life we want or the life he wants us to have. But he's not mad. More than anything else, I find God saying, come as you are. Let's start here. He wants to help you starting today. Look at your life today. How can we make it the life you've always wanted? And he's not saying that so he can change everything about you. He still wants your life to be your life, the life you choose. He just wants it to be the best life it can be according to what you want and what you are willing to do. He wants you to get as much out of it as you possibly can. He loves you and he wants what's best for you. And that is not about a list of do's and don'ts. And it's not about making you to conform to some cultural model. It's about you being free to live the life you choose, but hopefully to enjoy the life you choose. A greater life than you've ever dreamed of. So give it a chance. Give relationship with him a chance. Talk to him. Start here and develop it. You might be amazed to find out that misconceptions were holding you back from the best friend you'll ever have and the life you've been looking for.